to a funny topic. Okay. Fuck the back. <laughs> we're running late, there, bud. But I had to have. Uh, we're waiting. <clears throat> Just waiting to go live. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to our virtual county council meeting. Today's date is March 23rd, 2020. It's now 6 p.m. Um, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. First, we have the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second it. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? If no discussion, all those in favor of approval of the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, before invocation, I think uh, Council Member Trapp contacted the clerk of court notification of uh, uh, the coronavirus. He's taking precautions due to the coronavirus. So I'd like to add, have that added to the minutes. Um, now down to our invocation, Council Member Gilbert, if you will, please. Father God, we come before you in the precious name of the living Son, Jesus Christ, giving you thanks for this opportunity to come before us, such an awesome God. We ask right now, Lord God, that you give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what you will have us to do for this county. We ask and pray, Lord God, that you would just bless each and every one under this, uh, as we go through this, this, this period now, Lord God. We know that you are in charge. We ask that you have favor on each and every one of us here. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Gibbert. Next, we have the approval of the regular meeting dated March 9th and the special meeting dated March 18th, 2020. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. It's been Second. moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? If no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have. Also, I'd just like to ask uh, council members to speak directly into the microphone so the uh, virtual community can hear us. Um, there are no public presentations. Now down to our public hearing. Um, this is, we have one item A to solicit public input on community needs and priorities for housing, public facilities, and economic development at, at the public hearing, Fairfield County would provide the results of its needs assessment and the activities which might be undertaken to meet identified needs, including the estimated amount proposed to be used for activities that will benefit persons of low and moderate income. But I think before I go into this public hearing, I'll let our administrator address the concerns. Yes, and initially we thought we may be able to uh, meet the requirements of the public hearing by doing it in this manner. Uh, but since we, with with the coronavirus, we're not having a, a public and their ability to get up and address council directly. Uh, the public hearing does not qualify, does not uh, meet uh, what is required by the Community Development Block Grant. Uh, these public hearings are required to take public input. So when we apply for Community Development Block Grants, typically they're five to seven hundred thousand dollars that uh, we have had the public's input and direction on what they think is the most uh, uh, needed uh, projects that we should apply for. But again, we, I think we did have one person submit something in writing, but we will have to put this off until a future date for it to qualify uh, okay. to meet the CDBG requirements. So with that being said, we'll move on and schedule a future date. Now down to ordinances, resolutions, and orders. We have one uh, item A, Ms. Davis, you mind? Reading, please. First reading by title only, ordinance number 741, an ordinance to establish operating and capital budgets for the operation of the county government of Fairfield County for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2020, to provide for the levy of taxes for Fairfield County for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2020, to provide for the expenditure of tax revenues and other county funds, to provide for other county purposes to provide for certain fiscal and other matters relating to county government and other matters related thereto. All right, Ms. Davis read the uh, first reading by title on order 741. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. It's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, any discussion, I'm sorry, there's no discussion on first reading. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. Now down to first reading only item B, Ms. Davis. First reading by title only, ordinance number 742, an ordinance adopting the 2018 edition of the International Building, Residential Plumbing, Mechanical, Fuel, Gas, and Fire Codes as the mandatory building codes for Fairfield County, South Carolina. All right. Ordinance number 742 has been read. Do I have a motion? So Second. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Once again, this is uh, first reading, so no discussion. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Now down to item C. Ms. Davis, if you would. First reading by title only, ordinance number 743, an ordinance adopting the 2017 edition of the National Electrical Code as the mandatory electric <coughs> code for Fairfield County, South Carolina. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Once again, this is first reading by title only. There is no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. Now down to ordinance 743 by first reading on Ms. Davis. 745 that we're on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, 740. Is it 745? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. D. First reading by title only, ordinance number 745, an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a fee in lieu of ad valorem taxes and incentive agreement by and between Fairfield County, South Carolina, and Project Cooler to provide for payment of a fee in lieu of taxes, authorizing certain infrastructure credits, authorizing the provision of a grant, approving the transfer of certain real property and other related matters. Do I have a motion? So move. Second it. It's been moved and properly second. Once again, uh, first reading by title only, no discussion. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. Now down to item E. Ms. Davis, if you would, please. First reading by title only, ordinance number 746, an ordinance authorizing the conveyance of all or a portion of that certain real property located at 93 Commerce Boulevard, Ridgeway, South Carolina, with TMS 18400007100 and other matters related thereto. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Once again, uh, first reading by title only, no discussion. All, the fo all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The ayes have it. Now down to item F, resolution number 20 dash 2020-04, a resolution amending and ratifying Article 3 of the bylaws of the Board of Trustees of Fairfield Memorial Hospital and appointing new members thereto. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second it. It's been moved and properly seconded. Uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Administrator Mr. Taylor for a discussion. Yes. Um, this comes about because initially, or a little mm. while back, we thought we had a sale on the hospital. And uh, we were hoping to sell it, and we wanted to facilitate a, food, uh, a smooth sale on that. Uh, the problem is we ran into, we, we found some of our board members really, based on our existing bylaws, uh, had expired. And the bylaws at that time even prevented them from continuing in their roles. So we found ourselves in a situation where we may have a willing buyer, but not have a board that could constitute a sale uh, or, or ratify that sale. So we, we started looking and uh, decided to make some uh, recommendations to council to change those bylaws because right now we, we find ourselves again in a situation where we, we don't need a board that's going to run a hospital. We need a board that can oversee the sale, disposition asset of the assets, and settling of the debts of the old hospital. So we're trying to modify uh, the bylaws to meet that need now, our current need. Uh, we have reduced it from seven to five. We do have some carryovers uh, because I think it is a good thing to have some institutional knowledge, some people who have uh, uh, an idea of where the hospital had come from uh, to help us move it forward with the sale. We do have some new members on there also, and we do have an appointee that would represent the county uh, because I do think the county has some interest in, in this property also. Uh, so you can see the, the board members that are being proposed there. Uh, we have run those by uh, uh, Tim Mitchell of the hospital and, and others, I think, have been appointed by members of council um, for your review. So if they're suitable, uh, we would make the recommendation that you uh, um, ratify this amendment. Uh, Mr. Morgan, do you have anything as far as additional changes you'd like to go over above and beyond the constitution of the, or the changes from 7 to 5? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of council, um, this resolution, um, when it was drafted, not only did Mr. Mitchell, uh, Tim Mitchell from the hospital have a chance to review it, but their uh, legal counsel did as well. And so it's been approved on both sides of, of the aisle, so to speak, as it relates to the legality of this particular resolution. And importantly, it, this allows for the continuation of the, the term 
of the members of the board to continue to go forward uh, on an automatic basis so that way it doesn't have to keep coming back and forward for up to three one-year periods. So as, as Mr. Taylor's pointed out, the hospital is currently winding down operations and it was based upon their advice that these terms um, be for this amount of time with this, we, with this number of members on the board. Well, this means that the chairman of the board would be over the hospital? What will happen is in this instance, the, when it comes to chairman of the board over the hospital, I don't think that is really the intent necessarily of running the hospital because, again, the, the chief officer over there, executive officer over there, is the one who's winding down the day-to-day -day operations. This board is more, as I understand it, um, and as Mr. Taylor's pointed out, constituted to help facilitate that winding down and in particular for the sale of any assets and the payment of any debts therefrom. What kind of salary is the director make? The one that's over there running it now. I have, I have no idea, Mr. Douglas. I think that's based upon the board's discretion, if I'm not mistaken. It is. And again, that's why uh, we did want someone um, from our organization represented on the board also, so we could um, um, kind of review some of the expenditures. Yeah. And, and this particular board that is in, that we're putting in place is just for the duration of the sale of the hospital. Yes, ma'am. And after that, everything. Well, I think worse. you would have. It would. It could extend beyond that. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, because again, once the sale is, is done, you would have to settle some debts. Okay. Uh, so you would have some assets there, po possibly to <coughs> distribute. Okay. Maybe he'd do a better remain. job of okay. trying to help sell it if you'd maybe offer him a half percent for his salary. I think Mr. Paul has got a question. I think it would be great if we could publish the names for the record. I'm definitely okay with that. I would be with that. <clears throat> I'm always somewhat leery because, again, if you all don't approve them and, and we've announced yeah. the names, some people get their feelings hurt. So, uh, But if you all are fine, we're releasing the names. I think we need to know the names, sir, before it's made public. You'd like me to read the names? Yeah. Certainly. And also that if for some reason something comes up with one of them, is there um, a uh, leniency in there where it can be changed or replaced yeah, I, I, or I, 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 all that's in place. So. Yes, I would think so. Yeah. The names we are proposing are Catherine Fantry, who is, I think, currently serving, James McGraw, who is serving, Ron Smith, uh, a new person is Cynthia Simpson, and Laura Johnson. Any further discussion from council? Seems like a good bunch. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Uh, I was having now down to board and commission minutes. Uh, each council member should have received them as information only. Uh, one of the library commission and two behavioral health board. Now down to board and commission appointments. Uh, do I have a motion? Seconded. It's been moved and properly seconded. We have uh, any discussion? We do have one appointment of Mr. Wilhelmina Robinson to behavioral health service board of district three. Do I have any discussion? If no discussion, uh, I entertain a vote. All those are signified by saying aye. In aye. favor? Any opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> no old business, no new business. Now down to our county administrator's report, Mr. Taylor. The first item we have is a request of action. Uh, again, with the, our current situation uh, with the virus, we have not taken this to um, a finance committee, as we typically do, we're taking this directly to council. Uh, so we have not presented this um, up until this point. But we do have a request from our Public Works uh, Road Maintenance Unit. We have a situation where uh, we have a 2012 Ford F750 single axle dump truck. Uh, its engine has gone out, and I think we have an estimate is at $28,268. Mr. Hartzog, I'll ask you to come up if you would to present this request. It is coming from... Uh, How Mr. much would a new engine cost? That's a new... It's a, it's a 2012. It's not worn out. It's just got a bad engine. Why can't we just get a new engine well, for it? That's what we're proposing, is a new proposed. engine. Yeah. I think a, a new truck would cost in excess of 150000 100000 100000 plus. 100000 plus. But we've got one again. It's 2012. It has 190,596 miles on it. Turn it over to you. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering something, too, like we was talking about the other day about the um, ambulances. Um, you know, we, we're buying the frames and putting the bodies and stuff off the ambulances on the new frames. Why can't we do the same thing with the dump truck? I, I you know, in the future. 
Look, well, let, let's let Mr. Uh, Art do his presentation, then we'll give him questions first, Mr. Devin. Well, I think uh, the body and the overall condition of the truck is in pretty good shape. Um, there is some concern with the virus outbreak, production, uh, not to mention cost, um, you know, retrofitting, uh, delays, that kind of thing. This is a substantial cost savings. It comes with a two-year uh, or 100,000-mile warranty, whichever comes first. Um, it, it just seems like at this particular time the most expedient, uh, cost-effective uh, option. Is, is it the same type of vehicle international we keep having problems with? Well, we have you, you have we have several different types of trucks and internationals and Fords and the, and they come with different engine engines like a Ford truck may have a Cummings engine, and it just varies. A lot of it is purchased uh, under state contract, and of course there is a. Uh, a, a substantial savings associated with that, but sometimes you you get what you pay for. Get what you pay for. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, this particular truck, you know, I went back just a couple of years, tried to pull some records, and a lot of it is sensors, emissions, labor, diagnostics. Um, we do have an individual uh, that is able to assist and has resulted in, in cost savings by uh, you know helping helping us with that with that sort of thing. And um, we we have enough to in the operating budget to cover it. We may have to move some money around, and um, but I, I think at this time this would probably, in my opinion, be the best option. Mr. Doug, Ms. Paul, can I get that price again? Uh, to to uh, re replace the engine? Yes, sir. It was twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand two sixty eight twenty nine. Two sixty eight twenty nine. That's everything or just a block? Uh, uh, Basically, to ha replace the engine, the whole engine. Yes. Question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bill. Who doing who doing the work to replace the engine? Are we doing that? Columbia, the dealer, um, the Cummings dealer, on Shop Road. Okay. If they don't do it, it won't be the warranty. Okay. <clears throat> Any further questions, comments from council? And again, just to reiterate, it will come out of his budget, existing budget, uh, vehicle uh, service account. Okay. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. It's been moved in proper second. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor of purchasing the uh, new engine, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks, Art. Thank you. The next item I have is just a, a simple update um, on um, how we're dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. As demonstrated by this meeting, we're reorganizing a lot of things. We are trying to uh, limit the public's access. And in fact, we have closed down the public's access to most of our buildings. We have put out drop boxes uh, that they can put things in. People are responding. They are using those. Uh, we're trying to do almost all our business, um, even enter departments by phone, by email, those kind of things. Again, uh, to follow what the, the president and what the governor is saying, limiting uh, our access, our public access uh, and interaction amongst groups of people. Um, we are, and I'll let um, Brad and, and, and Laura talk a little bit more about some things that we're going to do as far as changing some, some, act, or some hours for public services, such as at the Collection Center. But I did want to say one of the questions that we're getting a lot uh, is how can we help small business? That is one of the things I'm, I'm getting um, a lot of questions on. And obviously I think the federal government's trying to pass a, a package. They did not successfully pass that quite yet. Um, but when they do, we find, or I have seen in the past, even when you get these kind of packages passed, it's hard for local businesses to access those things because well, local small businesses, they really don't have the manpower to do that. They're having to concentrate on, on running their business, so they can't set aside time to try to figure out how to navigate the bureaucracy of, of accessing these monies or these funds. So one of the things we're really looking at doing is setting aside some resources and some staff that they can make themselves experts in what's available and that local business can come to them and we can try to help them act as a conduit to get some of these funds that may be available. So that's one of the things we're trying to do because that, that again, uh, is, is what we're getting a lot of questions about. How can we set, help small business? And that's something we really want to do. Yeah. Um, so that's Ms. one of the... No, I was just going to say, um, um, I guess, um, Mr. Taylor, you and I discussed this a little bit this morning. Um, this is 
absolutely um, a good thing because one of the questions I had just from the restaurant down there by where I stay, um, I want to thank you for your leadership in this effort because we really need to get this. If we do anything, it will be good so we can have people that somebody can call and say, this is how you do this. Mm -hmm. Here's this this, is, here's this is a good deal for this county if we can, if we can manage this. Big businesses, again, they have all the attorneys. They have all the staff they Absolutely. can dedicate. Small business, unfortunately, they have to concentrate on running the business, so, and they can't afford the attorneys to, to access it. So that's one of the things we're trying to do to address, address that. Mr. Taylor, uh, forgive me. Um, are we able to put a time frame on when citizens can maybe come and inquire? On can we put a time frame on it? Or? They can start inquiring, and we can, of course, take their names down and see what their needs are. Okay. But right now, again, there's there's it, 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 there's, yeah. an, there's a little bit from the Small Business Association. Uh, Chris and I have started. Chris Clawson and I have started looking at some of that, but it, it's not not much yet. So okay. Um, okay. we will keep an eye on it. We will try to understand it, uh, and and when it's available, no. We'll try to. If the county receives information, who does the county go to 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 find out whether or not funds are available? Again, that's, uh, I hope they will give us a process that we will know and understand. Uh, they're setting all of this up right now. Our contact is Small Business Association right now. We don't know if they're going to run some of these funds through them or if they're going to choose to create something new or, or how they're going to do it. We're, it's unknown right now. It's unknown. Yeah. And I'm sure it's just as uh, complicated and challenging for them because it's the first time for everybody. It is. So then you have to kind of work with it as you go along and find out what works, what doesn't work. You know, and questions will be asked as we go through the process. But we just keep working together. Ms. Paul. Are we going to postpone the business fee that we voted on at the last council meeting to put in place for like April the 15th or something, push it back till the virus is over with? We could. Uh, we haven't really discussed that. Um, <laughs> we had we that's something we can consider though that's a good thing that well, we might want to look at it's, it's not a lot but again with all that's on everybody we don't want to pull people out we just i mean the less complications in life right now the better possibly so we may need to set that aside for a little while okay that's something to consider um outside of that again mr calver do you want to go into what we're trying to do as far as uh, non-essential staff um and some other changes to hours that uh, uh, our services are available to citizens? Yeah. I'll start it off and then Mr. Calder will take <clears throat> over. Um, early last week, we had a department head meeting to discuss social distancing and for the department heads to start thinking about and planning for implementing a staggered work week. So in the middle of last week, uh, we offered all the high-risk employees the option of leaving. Some did, some didn't. Um, and high risk is defined as the elderly 60 and over or anyone that has any type of medical issue. The county facilities were closed to the public, but of course they still could call, email, um, and fax. So um, the offices are still running. It's just that we're just wanting to limit uh, the contact with the citizens and with us. In the future, if it really gets bad and comes to Fairfield County like it is in other places, we're going to consider closing down? Yes, sir. I will All say right. we did meet, I'll, I'll throw in real quickly, uh, we had a, a teleconference with DHEC today, South Carolina Department of Health and Environment Control. Uh, it's, it's moving rapidly. It was 195, I think, a day or so ago. It's yeah. 298 cases uh, in South Carolina now. Uh, we had one case now. We're up to two here in Fairfield. We're still... Uh, we haven't been impacted nearly as much as our neighbors. A, a question, uh, I'm, I know you're probably not finished, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Taylor, but uh, a question that keeps coming to me as a council member, what can we do for these uh, businesses that continue to run, such as the manufacturers that's continuing to have 40 and 50 employees? And is there a law available, or do we know of anything that could assist with you have a lot of people scared, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, you know, you really don't know what to tell them. So um, I, I'm just curious, is there anything available for? There's been some extensions uh, federally to the FMLA, 
but that only applies to people with more than I believe is 50 employees. Okay. That allows some exceptions for child care. Yeah. Um, and there's also an, uh, a part of it passed that where they have to pay employees a certain amount of sick time if they're out due to coronavirus okay. situations. So there are some federally mandated laws. Okay. Well, the restaurants in town, the restaurants in town are doing takeout. You know, you can call and order something and pick up. Again, um, I think it's really important too, as you, and I know we talked about the names, but I don't know whether you truly identified those names as of yet, Mr. Taylor. But um, to have those people are quickly identified that can help us as we look at everything coronavirus related and benefits related to it so we can kind of get that so people can can have that um, means to make sure they get information how, how we attain certain benefits that's going to be key I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt y'all can go ahead and continue <laughs> <laughs> I guess a lot of people just got questions, you know. Yeah, so. I understand. I think there are more questions than answers. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of now. questions. So. Like I said, the services uh, for the county departments are still available. Now, when it came to the recreation facility, of course, the after-school daycare has stopped and all other recreational activities have been postponed. There have been some of our fitness instructors that have called and asked could they do um, virtual classes and we said that that was okay to do. Uh, the museum, we've totally closed that for now. The recycling centers, and we just got to that today, in order to um, facilitate, you know, to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, uh, one of the things we did with the recycling centers is changing uh, the days open to Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from seven to seven. Uh, because most of our employees there are in the high-risk area, but we also still need to keep the recycling centers open, so we want to go to three days a week. We're going to three days a week, seven to seven. And uh, signs are uh, being made. How about yeah. the director? The director? Yeah, the directors of the department. Um, they're, they're required to come in and, and do staggered schedules for their employees, so they're coming up. Um, with, with um, a schedule on staggering their employees and still providing the service, but also at the same time, um, everybody not being in the same building at the same time, still um, still trying to do social distancing. Wouldn't that be day-to-day -day operations? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Involve that's, council. That's yes. definitely day-to-day, -day, but I, yes. I guess like, we're just interested. So. Okay. Um, but, but again, let, let me ask this question um, and make sure I got it straight. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays from 7A to 7P. 7A, 7P. Okay. The recycling centers. It's recycling Tuesdays, centers, Thursdays, yes. Saturdays, just the recycling okay. centers. It's already been put on Facebook so we can get the information yeah, out it, there, sent to the paper so it can be out yeah, there. Because um, one of the things I have, we, um, people in the community had this question, mm -hmm. and I called Mr. Taylor to ask him about that, so I, I'm very glad we're keeping it open. Yes, that's good. So we won't go into day to do any further. Y'all got any other updates? Oh, uh, <clears throat> just in general, um, we've tried to, as Mr. Taylor said, keep all our services available. Um, everybody has remote access of some type. Everybody has a way to check their voicemail from home. Um, uh, a lot of Mr. Douglas asked about the directors, most of which have laptops and can access everything remotely. We have IT has been huge in helping us with this whole process. Um, we started a couple weeks ago actually getting everybody up to date, being sure we could all uh, get what we needed to and not be here. So we've, we've been on it for a few weeks now. Appreciate your, everything you're doing. Thank you. Definitely. I don't know if this off scale or what, but how does the uh, ER, how does that work and what are we doing there and with the emergency room? Okay. Oh. We're, we're on. <clears throat> yeah. In the Providence, yeah. oh. Oh. we have had, we were maintained a direct line of communication with Mr. Joe Bernard, who was here the other day. Uh, we met with him again just the other day. Um, and again, we're also meeting with him in relation to the potential sale of that because this is not a good time for uncertainty in health care. So we want to make sure that 
uh, if there is a sale that um, that um, our interests are protected. And oh, no, I was saying as far as uh, the citizens getting the services that they need I, again, at the ER. I think that's that's that's, that's continuing. Finally. I haven't had any complaints. As I have of, not either. As of yet. That's it, uh, Ms. Johnson. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. it. Okay. We do have some updates about the budget work sessions. Yeah, can we go over those. Or? Okay. I'm sorry. <coughs> um, She's got some updates on budget work sessions. Okay. 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 We had the first reading of the budget tonight. We have a work session scheduled for Monday, March the 30th. That is canceled. Um, during this time, finance will be preparing the budget books and we'll make arrangements to get those to y'all. The work session, April the 6th, we're going to tentatively plan to keep that one. This will only, this will be limited to only the departments with capital requests or new positions. The work session on April the 20th, we'll tentatively plan to keep that date. This will be limited to only those agencies requesting an increase in their allocation and for any final questions. Um, April the 27th is the second reading in the public hearing. May the 11th is the third and final reading. Um, when Ann and Laura made this schedule, it had a cushion in it already, so if we need to move it around or schedule other dates. Um, once council gets their budget books, It'd be very helpful if you have any questions, if you could put that in email form. That way everyone can be better prepared and the meetings will move along a little quicker. So, when, will we, when will we get the budget books? Should be about a week, if I'm not mistaken, a week and a half. Yeah, we'll try to get them out next week. Um, we usually like to get them to you about a week ahead. So with that meeting being April 6th, Monday, April 6th, we'll try to get them to you you know, toward the end of this week, first and next. And we may work with each individual on your preference. I think we usually give everybody a big book, but if there's somebody that just prefers to have it electronic, since, you know, things are a little different right now, we'll just work with you and get to you in the best way you want it. Okay. Well, it's down to county council time. Would any council member like to be recognized? Mr. Douglas, go on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I do. Um, go ahead, Mr. Bell. Um, this coronavirus is um, it, this is serious stuff, and um, want to want to make sure we um, just just make sure we communicate to everybody, and I, I know we're doing that. Is um, we we just need to be safe, and, and think about what we're doing. Do the things that um, the CDC has asked us to do, washing hands, um, just um, sanitizing stuff. I got one call today, and one of the things is telling me, really didn't think about it, but I should have, is, uh, is even when you pump gas, to make sure you um, taking precautions, even when you're pumping gas and that kind of thing. So um, uh, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of things going on. So um, we need to be as especially um, as careful as we can so we can protect ourselves, so we can protect other folk too. So, and um, and they says we ought to behave as if we have it. So again, I want to th um, thank the administration for the work they're doing and trying to make sure we we keep this county safe and that kind of stuff. So, just just appreciate everything that everybody doing. Any other, Vice Chair Goins? I too would like to thank each and every one of you, the team, everything that you're doing. No, life has changed completely for the world, and um, it is uh, an uncertain time, but if we think our life is always uncertain, but we began to make it through. We've gone through that process. We are flexible. We will adjust, and we will make it. And want to reiterate on the hand washing, I want to um, say the, with the governor and the president as well, this is something that we should not even have to be stressing so hard because it's a part of daily life. It is important. It's something which should be taught when our children are little, hand washing, hygiene, all of those things are so important. Even things around our home, um, having debris and different things, all those things harbor bacteria, infection, and germs. So all of this is a part of this. But it's, oh, excuse me, I thought I had it off. But, um, 
it is just so important. Our children, they have a habit of just touching things and not thinking about it. We have to start teaching them the importance of safety, of bacteria, what goes on. Um, but when our hands touch something, coughing in our hands, um, and they, I just have to get real, using tissue, when you use that tissue, it should be thrown in the trash and your hands washed. It shouldn't be stored or harbored in your pocket, in your purse or whatever. All these things are just so important to keep us safe and keep our families safe. I also want to thank um, Fairfield County, the bus drivers, everybody, all of the people that are on the front line in this. And um, today, through the community, I didn't know, even know that they were doing the bus came through. And they were dropping off lunches for uh, seniors, for Absolutely. anybody in the home. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for people like that, that just care, that just go out of their way to do those things. And some people, I want to encourage them to please don't just throw it in the trash, use it. If you're not going to use it, maybe pass it on to somebody else because it's not only a cost, but it's a service that somebody is taking their time, risking their health to give. So I just want to say thank you to all our first responders, doctors, nurses, technicians, everybody. Thank God for that. And I want to remind people, this is not our first pandemic. There's been epidemics in history before, but God brought us through it, and he will do it again because he's well able. Thank you. Ms. When is the uh, the work schedule, the modified work schedule, when are we, the when is that going live, I guess? That's already started. It's already started? Okay. Yes, it's already okay. started. All right. Any other councilmen would like to be recognized? If, if not, I'll, I'll just uh, let council know I have been talking in close uh, discussion with our House Representative, Representative McDaniel, and I think we started about two weeks ago just trying to figure out what can we do for the elderly and even for ourselves. Uh, I like to reiterate to the citizens, you know, as you can see, we all are taking that social distancing. Uh, we, we, we're taking it serious because yeah. this is something that could really affect a lot of people. So, um, you know, the numbers are steadily uh, are climbing and we just following the governor's uh, uh, directives that's been come down. So uh, it's, stu it's steadily changing every day. So I would encourage each and every one of you all to do the same. Um, um, this virus is serious, so you guys take it serious as well. Anyone else like to be recognized? Let's go I, home. So move. Mr. Gibb. I just wanted to say to the young people in our county, please take this serious because yes. it is really serious. Yes. Uh, you're young, but as you know now and heard on the news that some of the young people are now getting this, this virus also. So please take it serious. Your social gathering is a no-no right now. So please, please, because you take it back to your grandparents or your parents, and you know, and when they're gone, it's too late to say I'm sorry. I'm going back home with my purple. I move to adjourn. <laughs> I fuck out a motion. The motion to adjourn. So move. We move. Probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, Thank you everybody. You're my, you're my grandson.